We get a lot of questions at the St. George Senior Citizen Center Computer Lab about what's a browser, what's a search engine, what's the internet, how do I make sense of it all, and how do I make it work for me, and also internet email. So this brief video is going to try to give you an overview of what the differences are between a search engine and a browser and what the internet really is. There's an option popping up here on the browser that I'm using and I'm going to just click X on it for right now. It's beyond the scope of this video presentation. So I'm using Mozilla Firefox and you can tell that by the little icon up here and also that it says Mozilla Firefox and I've set Google up as my home page. You can set up any home page you like. I'll quickly go through and show you some things later on in the video that you can tweak a little bit for your browser. So to start with, the internet is a vast storage area worldwide of an amazing amount of information. And it's almost impossible to comprehend how much of information is out there. A browser is an application that runs on your PC that makes that infinite amount of information out there on the internet available to you. And there's a couple of different ways you can do that in terms of finding that information. You can locate information by searching for it. And then when you find something you like, you can add some bookmarks. And this is the Mozilla bookmark menu. And there are a couple of things already put here. This is the default Mozilla bookmark page. So there are not a lot of bookmarks there right now. And this is the Google homepage. And you can see that Google has a lot of different functions that you can do with it. We're going to focus on search right now. And the search engine for Google, the way I have it set up right now, is you would type either right here in this area where I have the cursor, or you also have the option of typing in the smaller area up here. And you can also pick a different search engine depending on how your browser is set up. A little bit beyond the scope of this video, if you want more information on choosing a search engine, getting your computer set up to use the most effective search engine, and that sort of thing, please do bring your computer into the St. George Senior Citizen Center Tuesday through Friday from 9 to 11.30, and we'll help you understand and sort out all these various issues. They are a bit beyond the scope of this particular video. So I'm going to leave the default up there as Google, and I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to type in a question. Now, one of the things I want to emphasize is a lot of you are using computers and you're a little bit confused about something that you might need to do, a uh, problem you need to fix, or something else. So one of the things you can use a search engine for is to try to find information for help. And I typically use Google instead of using the application help. So let's say that if I'm using Microsoft Word and I want to figure out how to set tabs in Microsoft Word for Microsoft Office 2013, I would do the following. Oops, I have a misspelling there. I'll backspace that and get rid of that. Okay, so here's my question. And I'll go over here and click the search button. And right here we have an answer from Microsoft. Office.microsoft.com. Now this is another thing I want to emphasize. You need to be very careful as you're cruising the internet that you're going to legitimate sites. There are other sites that try to make themselves legitimate by putting Microsoft somewhere in the URL. This is called the URL right here where I'm moving the cursor, this, this part of it here. You really only want to get information from official sites. And an official site would be something that says Microsoft.com. It may have something at the beginning, it may have something at the end, but it's going to have Microsoft.com. 
And the other one below it you can actually see says Microsoft.com as well. And then I can scroll down here and we can look and see that there are other organizations who are also providing help. And that's not to say that they're illegitimate. It's just to say you have to use a little bit more care when you're perusing those websites. It's a lot of information here on how to set tabs, changing styles, things like that. But let's just have a look at the first link that came up. Okay. And a quick way to set tab stops in your document. And you can see the answers here. And this was actually a lot easier, from my perspective, than going to the help option in Microsoft Word and trying to figure out the answer that way. So in a nutshell, I never use the help options in any of the applications that I use. I use a search engine, and in this case I use Google. So you can ask all kinds of questions of Google. It has interesting things like I misspelled that. One inch to centimeters. And it has a conversion tool. And that equals 2.54 centimeters. And you can change it here. And you can change it here. So this is a particular Google function. So Google has a lot of interesting things you can do. There's a lot of reasons why we use it. But again, helping you understand what the best browser for you to use and the best search engine is really something that you ought to come into the lab and we'll discuss with you. I like this one also because I've got my internet email right here. So to recap, the internet is a vast store of information. You cannot access it directly from your computer without a browser. And the browser that you use is up to you. There are three major browsers right now. Mozilla Firefox, Internet Explorer, and Google Chrome. Different people have different preferences. I've been a Firefox fan for a long time, so I tend to stick with it. I understand how to use it. And they don't tend to change Firefox as often as they change some of the other browsers. But what browser you use is completely up to you. Now, having established a browser, the next thing you can do is you can do something for a different search engine. So let's say I wanted to use a different search engine, and I wanted to use the address bar which is, notice this is what's known as a URL that I've highlighted here. And I want to highlight everything and backspace it to get rid of it so it's completely blank. And I'm going to go to yahoo.com and hit return. Okay, and now I'm on the Yahoo homepage. And there's quite a lot here, but the very first thing is search. And if I ask it the same question, Oh. oh, I say I have another typo there. Okay, so my question looks legitimate. Oh, I need to put an I in here. So do peruse your question before you ask it, just to make sure you're asking the question you think you're asking. We'll do search. And you'll see that the second link this time is the link we're really looking for. And the first link is sponsored by Microsoft and they want you to buy software. So this is something else to understand. Companies pay to have their responses appear higher than other responses that you get. So in, when we were using Google search, this option right here was actually the first one. In Yahoo, it's the second one. Now another thing to notice here is that notice this is a slightly different color. That means we've recently visited this URL. It's sort of a purple color instead of a blue. But the answer is there, and I click on it, and I have exactly the same answer. So Yahoo did as good a job as Google. I just had to skip one link and go to the second link. And I'll close that. And there are lots of other search engines. There's AltaVista. Okay, and I'm not going to continue to run all these various searches. There's Ask. I'm 
Okay? So you really, you can either use lots of different search engines or you can pick one and just stick with it. It's completely up to you. There is no right answer here. It's whatever works for you. Now, another thing I'm going to mention here, but I'm not going to show you how to fix, is occasionally if you've been off cruising the internet and downloading software and doing various things, you have a lot of what they call toolbars right here with all kinds of options on them and things that you don't perhaps understand, you don't know how they got there, and they're very confusing to you. It can be somewhat troublesome to try to get rid of some of those, and there are a couple of different ways to do it. So rather than create a video, because there's really an infinite different ways that those could have appeared there, and a couple of different ways to get rid of them, if you have an issue where you have in your browser a lot of things up here that are just seem to make no sense to you, you don't know how they got there, you don't know why they're there, you don't know what to do with them, they're just adding visual clutter, you'd like to get rid of them, that's the sort of thing that we can help you add at the St. George Senior Citizen Center Computer Lab. So do feel free to bring your computer in and ask us to help you sort those kind of problems out. So one thing I'll show you here is how to set up your home page. So you go to Tools, you go to Options, and in Mozilla, your home page goes right there, and you type it in and you do OK. So if I close Mozilla, and start it up again, it goes straight to Google. Now I'll also start up Internet Explorer. And again, it's asking me something that's beyond the scope of this particular presentation. If you have a question about this particular message down here, do come into the lab. I'm just going to close it for now. And because this is the first time I've used Internet Explorer 10, I'm going to just say, use the recommended settings. And I'm also going to resize this a bit so you can see it a bit better. Okay, and then you can close these tabs. These are all tab browsers now. So tabs are an interesting thing where you can literally have as many tabs as you want. And it's like having different browsers open at the same time. So in the old days, if you wanted to have different web pages being viewed, you had to have several different versions of the browser that you're using open. And it got a little bit confusing. So a couple of years ago, they came up with this idea of tabs. And it's really very cool. And right now it's asking me, would you like to make Internet Explorer your default, default browser? I'm going to answer no to that. And I'm going to skip this one here. As I said, it's beyond the scope of this presentation. And if I want to set up my home page for here, we go to this little wheel thing, Internet Options, and we set up the home page here, www. Google.com. Now, in the old days, you used to always have to preface it with HTTP colon slash slash. There's no harm in doing that today, but in many cases, that's redundant. Now, I'm going to close Internet Explorer. And again, it's going to say, do I want to close all tabs or close the current tab? I like to have it just go ahead and close all the tabs, so I choose that option. Again, your choice is completely up to you. And then I'll open Internet Explorer again. Resize it to fit the screen. And I'm going to make this a little smaller. And you can see that they give you an option, don't ask this question again. So I won't get that again. So now you can see that my Internet Explorer looks almost identical to my Google. They both will essentially accomplish the same task. So it's really what you're comfortable with. As I said, there's three primary browsers. There are other ones out there. I don't have Chrome installed on this machine. 
but you get the general idea that you can pretty much do the same thing with all the different browsers. Each of them share the same functionality, they just do it in a slightly different way. So this concludes the video on what is the internet, what is the browser, and what is a search engine. And if you have any further questions and would like further information, please do again come back into the St. George Senior Citizen Center Computer Lab Tuesday through Friday, 9 to 11.30. And please do feel free to bring your computer in. Uh, we do have computers to use if you don't have a computer or if you have a desktop computer and you're not in a position to bring it in. But if you do have a desktop computer and you have some things that you'd maybe like us to look at, feel free to bring in just the tower unit. We have mice and keyboards and things like that, so you don't need to bring anything other than the tower unit. One caveat, we do not do virus removal and we do not do operating system installations, but we do have people within the St. George area whom we recommend to do that kind of work. And this concludes this video.